we're going to be tying up one of the best variations of the band Squirmy Worm. We'll start with some hot pink thread. Snip the excess free, securing the bead in place using some lead free wire. Helicopter the excess free and continue wrapping to the bend of the hook. At which point we'll take a few wraps forward and grab some stretchy material. Here I'm using a rubber D-rib, however I would suggest using a stretchy dental band that I've linked in the comments. Create a loop with your material and secure it to the back of the fly. Make sure your loop secured tightly by taking securing wraps both in front as well as behind your loop and continue towards the head of the fly. Snip one of your excess bands free, once again continuing towards the head of the fly. We'll fold our rubber material backwards, take a few securing wraps towards the head of the fly, and once again create a loop in our rubber band, using your thread to secure it lightly in place at first. This way, by pulling on the opposite end, we can shrink the loop to the size we're looking for. Once happy, secure in place with your thread and continue wrapping towards the bend of the hook. Snip your excess free and use your thread to smooth out the body. Finishing at the head of the fly. Hold everything in place by whip finishing, snip your thread free, and paint over everything with some UV resin to add shine and durability to our pattern. Fix in place with the UV light and grab some spare wire. Use the wire to string it through the two loops that we just created and open up the loops at the end using a pair of tweezers. Next, we'll grab some squirmy wear material, here I'm using pink, insert it through our loop and begin pulling the wire to help draw the squirmy wear material through the two loops. They should be quite tight to hold it in place. Once complete, remove the wire, snip the squirmy wear material to length, and this is an improved squirmy worm, suggested by Tim from the Trout and Feather. I've linked his full video in the comments below. It's an excellent pattern that promotes a lot of movement in the water and also can be replaced if the fish chew it up. I would highly suggest giving it a try. And as always, if you'd like to win this one, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing a secret that fly tires don't want you to know. But to start, we'll grab some orange thread and snap the excess free. Continue wrapping your thread to the back of the hook and create a thread dam that'll be important for our next step. Once complete, grab some brown biots, strip off two and place them in a V formation. We'll measure them to be about the length of the hook shank and secure them to the back of the fly. The thread buildup will help display them out. Secure the biots tightly and begin wrapping towards the bead. Once complete, snip the excess furry and grab some brassy wire. Here I'm using copper. Insert the wire into the bead, secure it tightly and wrap back towards the tail. Next, we'll grab one of my favorite dubbing blends, you can find it in the links below, create a dubbing noodle, and begin wrapping it around our hook shank, building up a taper as we work towards the head of the fly. Take your time with this and tighten the dubbing noodle as needed. Now remember, start with a little bit because you can always add more. Next, we'll grab our wire and begin wrapping in open spirals towards the head of the fly. Secure tightly, taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind the wire, and helicoptering the excess furry. And then we'll brush out the body to give this fly a nice buggy look. Pull any excess fibers free and add a very loose dubbing noodle, wrapping this just around the head of the fly. Pull everything back and add a couple thread wraps in front. With this complete, brush it out once again to give it a nice buggy look. And this is a fly called Scruffy. And while it may not look pretty, I prefer fishing these buggy flies. So remember, if you're new to fly tying, don't get discouraged by seeing someone's pretty fly because a fly like this is likely to catch more fish anyway. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. This is one of the world's most used and successful fly patterns. To tie it, we'll grab some Vivas in black, securing it tightly to our hook shank and snapping the excess free. We will then insert some lead-free wire to help hold our bead in place, securing it tightly and helicoptering the strands free. We will then grab some silver brassy wire, insert this into our bead and begin wrapping it well into the bend of our hook. 
Once complete, we will begin building up a body transition with our thread. One simple way to do this is return your thread towards the head of the fly and then start wrapping back towards your wire, stopping just before you reach where you started with your thread. Repeating this process will make a nice transition towards the head of our fly that you can make as bulky or as slim as you'd like. Once we're happy with our transition, we will grab our wire and begin wrapping it forward in open spirals towards the head of the fly. Take your time to make sure the wraps are evenly spaced. Once complete, we will secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind our wire and helicoptering the excess free. Grab yourself some peacock hurl. I'll select two strands and secure this to the head of the fly. Securing them by wrapping slightly back on the body and returning our thread to the bead. We will begin wrapping our peacock around the head of the fly until we reach our thread. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front of the peacock as well as behind and snipping the excess free. And this is the zebra midge. If you would like to support the channel and pick up a few, you can visit my website here to see this and all the variations of it I like to use. And if you'd like a chance to win this fly, subscribe to the channel, like this video, and comment below hashtag flies. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. This underutilized fly pattern is one of the best at catching brook trout. To tie it, we'll start off with some pink thread, secure it to our hook shank, and insert some lead-free wire to hold our bead in place. Helicopter the excess free and continue wrapping until you reach the hook bend. Next, we'll grab some pink crystal flash, select about four strands and secure them to the back of the fly. Continue securing the crystal flash up the hook shank and snip the excess free. Next, we'll grab some small wire here I'm using rust, insert it into the bead, securing it to the hook shank and wrapping until we reach our tail. We'll then grab some squirrel. This one was sent to me by Carson R, so thank you for sending that along. Strip some of the natural fibers free and create some dubbing. We'll then create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping it forward until we reach our bead. Doing so in close touching spirals and building up a transition that increases as we move towards the head of the fly continuing to add and tighten the dubbing as needed. Once our thread reaches the head of the fly, grab your wire and begin to wrap it forward in open spirals, counter wrapping the dubbing. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the wire and helicoptering the excess free. With this complete, we'll brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. Next, we'll grab some dubbing here I'm using a pink, synthetic UV dubbing. Create another dubbing noodle and begin wrapping it around the head of our fly. Whip finish to hold everything in place. Snip your thread free and brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. And this is the pink squirrel, an extra buggy pattern that works particularly well to catch brook trout. You can tie it up with the materials below or submit a custom order form on my website and I'll tie some up for you. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This productive pattern was banned for use in competitions, and today I'm going to show you how to tie it. We'll secure some white thread to the hook shank and snap the excess free. We'll prevent our bead from spinning around the hook by inserting some lead-free wire, securing it, and helicoptering the excess free. Lay down a thread base until you reach your hook point. We'll then grab my new favorite mop material called Galaxy Mop. You can pick it up from the JStockard website for 15% off using the code above. This particular one is in tan. Secure the mop material tightly to the top of your hook shank, and if you want it to be extra secured, you can add some super glue. Snip your galaxy mop to length, and wrap your thread to the head of the fly. Here, we'll fold over our thread, create a loop, and wrap it back towards the mop material. Return your thread to the head of the fly, leaving us with this dubbing loop. Next, we'll grab some dubbing, here I'm using a laser dubbing in tan. Insert it into our dubbing loop and spin it up. We'll then brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. We'll wrap our dubbing up the body until we reach the thread. Secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. 
Finish it off by brushing it out to give it an extra buggy look. And this is the Galaxy Mop, one of my new favorite variations of the mop fly to fish. You can pick up all the materials needed to tie this fly by clicking the JStalker link below. Additionally, JStalker has provided a $25 gift card to one lucky winner. To win, comment hashtag JStalker in the comments below. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. These flies will help you catch more fish this winter. To start this pattern, we'll grab some Vivas thread in white and secure it to our hook shank. We will then grab some Flashaboo, here I'm using Pearl. Secure a single strand to our hook shank and begin wrapping towards the bend of our hook. We'll continue wrapping well into the hook bend at which point we'll reverse directions and begin building up a smooth transition towards the head of the fly. With this step complete, grab your flash boo and begin wrapping this in closed spirals towards the head of the fly. Take your time to ensure that we cover the entire thread base. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure and snip the excess free. To increase the fly's durability, as well as its shine, we'll add a small layer of UV resin. Here I'm using a thin bone dry. Once happy, secure with a UV light and grab some peacock curl. Select a single strand and secure it to the head of our fly. Once secure, we'll begin hackling our ostrich hurl towards our thread, doing so in closed touching spirals. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. Whip finish to hold everything in place. This is a simple fly that can be tied in small sizes. Additionally, its bright color allows it to be noticed. Midges are definitely a staple of the trout's diet in winter, and your fly box should have several of them. If you'd like to stock up, you can visit my website below to see all of our midges selection. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, we're gonna to be tying a controversial fly. To start this pattern, grab some ultra thread in red and attach it to our hook shank. Snip the excess free and insert a lead-free wire. Secure tightly and helicopter the excess free. We'll then wrap back well into the bend of our hook and grab some pink crystal flash. We'll select about four strands, secure it tightly to the back of our fly, and snip the excess free. Further secure it to the hook shank and wrap back up towards the head of our fly. We will then select a white and pink microfiber cotton, secure this to the head of our fly, wrapping back towards our crystal flash. Once complete, we'll make sure that there's no exposed fibers showing, building up a nice red base. We can then fold over our cotton, use our fingers to create a small loop, and secure that tightly to the hook shank, using our thread to secure it in place. Wrap back on it slightly, and then we'll continue up the fly, repeating this process. Create a loop with your fingers slightly larger than the last, secure, and continue to the next loop. We will make this one roughly about the same size, secure it tightly, creating one last loop that is slightly smaller than the previous, securing it tightly, and snipping the excess free. We can then whip finish, securing everything in place, snip our thread free, and add some head cement or UV resin to add some durability and shine to this pattern. And finally, brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. Love them or hate them, egg patterns are extremely productive, and I would love to hear your opinions and thoughts on this in the comments below. If you want to win this fly, you can add hashtag flies for your chance to win. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, we're going to be tying up a freshwater shrimp that can work particularly well if you have scuds in your water. And if you'd like to win this one, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. To start, we'll secure a white thread to our hook shank, wrapping back towards the bend of our hook, in order to lay down a thread base. Return your thread to the head of the fly, and secure some lead-free wire in place. Secure tightly, wrapping your wire in front of your thread, and using this to wrap it backwards to add some weight, as well as profile to our pattern. Continue to do so, once we reach the bend of the hook, we'll reverse our wire's direction 
back up towards the head of the fly in order to build up some more bulk and weight. Secure it all in place using your thread and helicopter the excess free. Once again, cover it up with your thread to make sure it's secured tightly in place and grab some brassy silver wire. We'll secure this towards the head of our fly and wrap back towards the bend of our hook. Bring your thread back to the middle and grab some hollow tinsel. Here I'm using silver, securing it to the upper side of our fly and wrapping back towards the back of our fly. With these secured in place, we'll follow up with one more material called the thin skin. Trim the thin skin to a point and secure it over the back of your fly. Once again, wrapping back towards the tail. Next, we'll advance our thread slightly, create a dubbing loop, wrapping it back towards the tail before returning our thread towards the head of the fly. With this complete, we'll grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a UV Dunn, inserting it into our dubbing loop and spinning it up. We'll then brush it out to give it a nice buggy look before wrapping it around our fly body. Doing so in close touching spirals, brushing the fibers back as needed until we reach our thread. Here, we'll secure it in place, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. We'll then brush everything out to give it a nice buggy look and imitate legs. Once happy, we'll grab our thin skin, fold it over the back, securing it at the head of the fly. With it secured tightly, we'll snip the excess off close, grab our hollow tinsel, folding it over the back and securing it at the head of the fly. Snip your excess free and grab your wire. We'll counter wrap our wire over the dubbing being careful not to trap too many fibers in the process. Continue to do so, wrapping forward in open spirals, brushing out the dubbing with your fingers as needed. This helps add durability as well as a segmented look to our pattern. Continue to do so until you reach your thread, at which point we'll secure the wire in place by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind our wire. Helicopter the excess free and whip finish to build up a head and hold everything together. Snip your thread free and brush it out in a downward motion to free up any trapped legs. At which point we'll trim it up to mimic legs, keeping the legs just shorter than our hook point. And grab some UV resin. We'll paint over the back with some UV resin. This will make our pattern extremely durable and also add a great amount of shine to the back of our fly. Fix in place with a UV light and follow it up with a second layer. Building up the layers in small portions will give it a better appearance in the end. Fix in place with the UV light, coating it over with one last coat of thin UV resin to help bring out its shine. And this is the Diamond Scud, a fly pattern that can work particularly well in the winter as well as in any body of water to use as a tractor where you'll find freshwater shrimp, otherwise known as scuds. Thank you all for watching, and if you'd like to stock up your fly box with some of the fly patterns we have, you can visit our website listed in the comments below. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This will likely land you your first fish on a dry fly this season. To tie it, we'll start off with some small black thread and securing it to our hook shank all the way to the bend of the hook. Once we reach the bend of the hook, we'll reverse our thread's direction back up towards the head of the fly, keeping your thread buildup as smooth and uniform as possible. Once we reach the head of the fly, we'll reverse our thread slightly and grab some grizzly saddle hackle. Select a single feather measured to the size of your hook, strip a few fibers free, and use this to secure it to your hook shank. Bring your thread back up to the hook eye and begin to hackle your feather forward until you reach your thread, typically about two to three turns. Secure with your thread and snip the excess free. With this complete, we'll brush all our fibers upward using our thread to help hold it in place, beginning by wrapping back on it slightly and then looping around it as you would a parachute. Continue doing so until all the fibers stand upward. Next, we'll take our thread and carefully run it through the fibers to help spread them back out as well as increase the fly's durability. Finishing with your thread just in front of our tuft. Next, we'll grab a high-vis parapost, here I'm using fluorescent green, and secure this just behind our hook eye. 
and fold the material backwards using your thread to hold it in place. Once complete, we'll whip finish to hold everything together. Snip our thread free and cut your para post to length. And this is the High Viz Noceum Midge. It offers an incredibly thin profile. It's one of my go-to patterns when I see any midges or small flies emerging. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This is a must-have dry fly. To tie this pattern, we will use Vivis in 16 knot in black, securing it tightly to our hook shank and snapping the excess free. We can then grab some grizzly saddle feathers, selecting one whose fibers are a bit longer than our hook gap. Pull off some excess fibers and use that to secure it tightly to our hook shank, wrapping back into the bend of the hook. Once finished, we'll wrap forward, grabbing some peacock curl. We'll select about three fibers and tying them onto the head of our fly, wrapping back towards the tail. Once complete, we will return our thread to about one third down the hook shank and tie in some orange para post. Securing it tightly and pulling both strands up in order to create a post. To do this, we will lightly wrap our thread around the base and continue to do so until the post stands up straight. Once complete, we can wrap back down to the base and take some further securing wraps to ensure our post doesn't twist around the hook shank. We'll snip it to length and wrap our thread to the head of the fly. We can now begin to wrap our peacock curl up the body. I like to twist mine into a braid and then continue to wrap it up the body. We will do so in closed touching spirals, trying to prevent any of our parapost material from being trapped underneath. However, if you do trap some, it's easily picked free. Once we reach the head of the fly, we will secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. We will now begin to wrap our saddle hackle forward and we will do so in open spirals until we reach the head of our fly. At which point we can secure, taking thread wraps both in front and then pulling all the fibers back to build up a small head. With that complete, we will snip the excess free and cut our para post to length. We will then whip finish to secure everything in place, and this is a high vis Griffith Nat. It is a fantastic dry fly pattern that deserves a spot in your fly box. Speaking of fly boxes, if you would like to help support the channel, you can visit my website to purchase flies, fly boxes, or other merchandise below. Thank you all so much for the support, and I will see you in the next one. We're going to be tying up a very simple yet effective caddis pattern. We're going to grab some black thread. I like to use Vivis in 16 aught. We're going to secure our thread to the hook, wrap that back to the head of the fly, and then we're going to secure the bead in place by adding a lead free wire. Now if you want, you can take several wraps with your lead free wire to help secure it as well and add some extra weight. Next up, we're going to grab some flashaboo. Now I'm using a pearl in this case. You're only going to need one strand to create several flies. We're going to secure that to the head of the fly and wrap that well beyond the hook shank. Next up, we're going to be grabbing some hair's ear. Now, I like to use this insect green color, but you can use any olive color or a tan, black, whatever you might need in order to match your particular hatch. We'll create a dubbing noodle and then start to build up our body. You're going to want to taper this as much as you can on the way up. As strands fall out, don't worry about it too much. I like the added bugginess personally. And if you don't want it to be buggy, some people like these patterns to be quite sleek, you can use a different synthetic form of dubbing. So we'll wrap that up to the head. And if you don't quite make it, that's fine. We can always add some extra dubbing. It's always easier to add more dubbing than to take some off. Now, once we get to the head of the fly, we'll secure everything, reach back and grab our flashaboo and start to wrap this up in open spirals, creating a segmentation to our body. We'll do that to the head of the fly, secure everything in place, snip that off. After that, we'll grab some black hair's ear, create a looser dubbing noodle and you can tighten it as needed and finish off the head of our fly. 
pull everything back and get a good thread wrap in front of all these strands to secure everything in place. But you can leave it as is, or you can fish these how I love to. And that would be to grab a brush and thoroughly brush these out to give it a nice buggy look. I find that buggy flies just catch more fish. And if you even want to top this off some more, adding a CDC hackle around it is also another great addition. Once we finish with that, pull out any fibers that you don't like, grab a whip finisher or use your fingers and secure everything in place. And that is my version of the Waltz Worm. This is an excellent fly to fish. It makes for a good searching pattern. Definitely recommend giving it a try. And if you don't tie yourself but want to try this fly, you can visit my website down below. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. And if you want to see more like it, make sure you go down below, hit the subscribe and bell notification. And I will see you in the next video. This natural pattern can help you catch some of those finicky fish. To tie it, we'll start off with some tan thread. Secure it to your hook shank. We'll then grab some synthetic quills. Secure it tightly to our hook shank, wrapping it back until we reach the bend of our hook. At which point, we'll reverse our thread's direction until we reach the head of the fly. We'll then grab some pheasant tail, select a few fibers, and secure them to the head of our fly, once again wrapping back towards the bend of our hook. Continue back until you reach the head of the fly, and then use your thread to build up a small body transition. Grabbing your pheasant tail once complete, and beginning to wrap it forward until we reach the head of the fly. Doing so in closed touching spirals. Once you reach the head of the fly, we'll secure using our thread and snip the excess free. With this complete, we'll grab our synthetic biot and begin to wrap it forward towards the head of the fly. Once again, doing so in closed touching spirals and securing it in place with your thread. Snip the excess free and paint it over with some UV resin. This will add both durability as well as shine to our body. Fix in place with a UV light and grab some dubbing. I'm using a synthetic hair's ear, create a dubbing noodle and begin to wrap this just behind the eye of our hook. Once complete, brush everything backwards and take a few thread wraps in front of your dubbing. And of course, brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. Pull any excess fibers free and grab a CDC feather. Here I'm using tan. Snip away a few of the fibers, creating a triangle tie-in point that we can use to attach it to the head of our fly. Brushing the fibers backwards and hackling it around the head of our fly. You can do about one to two turns. With this complete, we'll secure it in place with our thread and snip the excess free. Brushing everything back and whip finishing to hold it in place. And this is a quilled soft hackle. It's an underutilized and incredibly productive pattern that works particularly well when there's a caddis hatch that's going to happen later in the day. I often tie these behind a heavy nymph or swing it through the current much like you would a wet fly. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. We're going to be tying up a marabou variation of the classic Steve Carey's Black Ghost. Now we're going to start with a flat black thread. I like to use Ultra Thread 140. Give ourselves a little bit of space for the head of the fly. Snip that free and then continue all the way to the end of the shank. And then we're going to grab ourselves a yellow feather. I like to grab about a quarter to a half of an inch. Make sure that's nice and even, and then tear that off. Measure that out to be about a quarter of our hook shank in length, and then secure it to the back of the hook. Once that's good and secure, we can start to wrap forward a little bit, grab our scissors, and then snip that off at an angle. Snipping it off at an angle is gonna allow us to create a more seamless transition when we're building up our body. We'll grab ourselves some brassy wire and silver. Now this is typically tied with a tinsel. However, I really like the durability that these brass wires offer and the ribbing looks quite good as well. So we're gonna secure that to the back of the hook. And once that's finished, we can start to create a seamless body transition to the head of the fly. Now, if you want, you can use a piece of yarn or something of the sort to build up your body by attaching it to the back. However, I like the simplicity of just using my flat black thread. 
Once that's finished, we'll grab our wire and start making some even wraps towards the head of the fly. Secure that wire down. I like to take some thread wraps both in front as well as behind because it makes helicoptering off the wire afterwards much easier. With our wire removed, we're going to grab some white marabou. Now I like to use the tips because these offer a lot more action in the water. Measure that to be about one and a half times our hook shank and length. Once we're happy with our length, we're going to secure that. And snipping off the excess once again at an angle. Next, I like to start to build up the head of my fly, but I don't get too carried away here because we still have one more material to add. We're going to go ahead and invert our fly if you have a rotating vise. If not, it's not a big deal. And grab some more of our yellow feather, about a quarter to a half inch in length. And then we're going to use that to create a throat of our fly. I like to measure mine just short of our hook point snip off our excess nice and close. From here we're going to clean up the head of the fly, make sure no yellow or white is showing, and finish off building off our head using our whip finisher. That way we don't have too much excess thread on the fly. Once we're happy with that we're going to make sure it's nice and secure, give it a little tug, and then snip it free. We're going to burn off any remaining fibers that we have at our head of the fly grab some UV resin and apply our first coat. Now this first coat sinks into the thread wraps a little bit, creates a nice even transition, hit it with a UV light, securing everything in place, and then we'll come back in for a second coat. This second coat smooths everything out, it makes the head nice and even. Hit it once again with the UV light, and there you have it, that is a marabou variation of the classic black ghost. I'd highly encourage you to give it a try. If you don't tie yourself but you'd still love to try this pattern, you can go down to my website, fill out the custom order form, and I'd be happy to send some your way. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Tired of throwing away your squirmy worms? Well this pattern is for you. We'll start with some flat black thread, attach it to our hook shank, and snip the excess furry. Continue wrapping to the bend of the hook and grab some squirmy worm material. Here I've selected to use this light blue color glows in the dark. Secure the material in place by taking some loose thread wraps at first and beginning to wrap tighter and tighter to secure it to the hook shank. This will help prevent your thread from cutting through the material, ruining your fly. Snip your squirmy worm material to length and select some medium green wire. Insert this into your bead and secure it tightly wrapping back towards our tail. We'll then select a dubbing blend. Here I've used chartreuse, green, and copper ice dubbing. Create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping this up your fly, creating transition towards the bead. You can tighten your dubbing and add more material as needed. We'll stop just short of the bead, grab our wire, and begin to counter wrap in open spirals till we reach our thread. This will help further secure the dubbing in place. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the wire and helicoptering the excess furry. For the head of the fly, I've selected some black hair's ear and peacock ice dubbing. Blend these two materials, create a dubbing noodle, and wrap this around the head of your fly. Once complete, we'll brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. This fly is excellent at catching fish, but still functions as a great caddis pattern once the tail is lost. Highly suggest stocking up on a few of these, as they can be a great chimeric fly. You can find them on my website listed below, and if you'd like to win this one, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. And I will see you in the next one. If you want to catch more fish, today's fly is for you. To start this pattern, we'll grab some 140 UTC in fluorescent pink, secure that to the hook shank, and snip the excess free. Continue to the bend of the hook, grabbing some pink squirmy worm material. We'll secure this tightly to the back of the fly, wrapping towards the bead. Flatten the body out as much as you can, but don't worry about it too much because we'll be covering it in our next step. Once we're happy with how the tail looks, grab a second piece of squirmy worm material, tying it on the body of your fly, wrapping back towards the tail. Once complete, return your thread to the head of the fly, and begin wrapping your squirmy worm material in loose spirals. Pulling the material too tight can result in it falling apart after the first fish. 
Once you reach your thread, secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. We will then whip finish to hold it in place. If you want to win this fly, comment hashtag flies below. And if you would like to support the channel and purchase a few, you can visit my website. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. Do you want a fly pattern that can catch fish worldwide, yet it's highly simple to tie? Well today, I'm going to show you how to make it. We'll start off with some black thread and grab some small wire. Here I'm using copper. Strip a small section free, inserting it into your bead and securing it tightly to your hook shank. Continue securing until you reach the bend of your hook, at which point we'll reverse our thread's direction back up towards the head of the fly and grab a rough grouse feather. I like to use the red phase. However, you can also use pheasant tail. Secure the grouse to the hook shank, once again wrapping back towards the bend of the hook. With this complete, we'll reverse our thread's direction and begin to build up a body transition towards the head of the fly. In order to do so, simply wrap back almost to your starting point, at which point you'll reverse your thread's direction, wrapping back up towards the head of the fly. Continue repeating this process until you reach the head of the fly, at which point we'll grab our roughed grouse feather and begin wrapping it forward in closed touching spirals. Do note that grouse feathers are slightly shorter than pheasant tail, so you'll have to work with a smaller fly. Here, I'm using a size 14, which is about as small as you can go. Secure it tightly with your thread, taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind, and snip the excess free. We'll then grab our wire and begin to wrap it in open spirals, counter wrapping our grouse feather. This will help add durability, as well as a little bit of shine to our pattern. Once you reach your thread, secure tightly, taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind, and helicoptering the excess free. Whip finish to hold everything in place, snip your thread free, and swap your thread out to your favorite hotspot color. Here I'm using orange, but pink or chartreuse are great alternatives. And whip finish to build up some bulk. And this is a simple pheasant tail, or in this case, ruffed grouse dropper. If you're not sure what dropper fly to select, this is a great go-to, as it can represent many aquatic insects. And if you'd like to win this, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This fly can help you catch more fish. To start, we'll grab some olive thread and secure it to our hook shank, keeping the scraps for a later step. Continue wrapping just before the bend of the hook and reverse your thread to the hook point. We'll then grab some micro fibbits. However, here I'm using some synthetic deer hair. It makes for a versatile replacement that can be used in multiple situations. Select out three fibers and measure them to be about the length of your hook shank. Secure them carefully to the back of your fly, ensuring that you don't wrap too far into the bend of your hook. Once complete, snip your excess free and secure them tightly to the hook shank, ensuring that they don't move around. With this complete, we'll grab our strand of thread we just set to the side, string it through our hook, and use your fingers to help separate the microfibbits. Carefully sliding your thread up the hook shank in between them to help create separation. Secure your thread in place and snip the excess free. Secure tightly, but make sure you don't wrap back on the microfibbits. This step helps ensure that they splay out nicely like a mayfly's tail. Next, we'll grab some olive dubbing. Here I'm using a PMD color, create a dubbing noodle, and begin wrapping this up the fly, creating a smooth transition towards the hook eye. Be sure to add or tighten your dubbing as needed. Once complete, we'll lay down a thread base towards our hook eye, returning and wrapping back on top of the dubbing slightly. Next, we'll grab a CDC feather, here I'm using a sulfur color, and measure it to be about the length of our body. Secure using your thread, wrapping back towards the dubbing. There's a few ways you can tie this fly. You can do as I'm doing here, wrapping forward on our CDC, folding it back, and securing it just as we've done before. This will help utilize your extra CDC and add a bit more flotation to your fly. So if you'd like to use this as a dry fly, 
I would highly suggest adding this extra step. However, I typically use this as an emerger behind a second dry fly and don't mind if it sinks. So I'll simply snip this excess free, which makes for a cleaner looking fly pattern. Our next step is to grab some more dubbing, create a dubbing noodle, and begin wrapping it forward to continue our transition towards the head of the fly, having it slope down once we reach the hook eye. With this complete will whip finish, to hold everything together, snip the excess free, and secure in place with some UV resin. And this is the RS2. It's a highly versatile fly that I've caught fish using it as a nymph, an emerger, and even a dry fly. And I would highly suggest giving it a shot this spring. And if you'd like to win this one, be sure to comment below, hashtag flies, and I will see you in the next one. This tiny fly ended up landing me my biggest fish last spring. To tie it, we'll start off with some olive thread, secure it to our hook shank, grab some extra small wire, here I'm using black, secure it to your hook shank, and continue wrapping well into the bend of the hook. At which point, we'll reverse our thread's direction a little bit past the barb. Here, we'll create a small buildup of thread that'll be the widest point in our fly. Once complete, we'll advance our thread forward, adding a couple layers of thread to our midsection and leaving some room at the head of the fly. With this complete, we'll once again create a small buildup of thread just behind the hook eye. This one will be slightly smaller than the tail. Next, grab your black wire and begin to wrap it forward in open spirals, continuing to do so until you reach your thread. At which point, we'll secure with our thread, taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind, and helicoptering the excess free. Whip finish to hold it all together. Snip your thread free and paint over the body with some UV resin. This will help create some shine, as well as make this pattern incredibly durable. And this is the black fly larva, a spring pattern that I never like to leave out of my fly box. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. We'll be tying up a simple, yet highly effective, streamer pattern. To start, we'll grab some red thread, secure it to our hook shank, and continue wrapping to the bend of our hook. At which point, we'll grab some yellow calf tail, select a small clump, and measure it to be a bit longer than our hook gap. To secure it to the back of the fly, I like to wrap my thread around the fur clump loosely, followed by a second wrap to tighten it up. This will help prevent the fur from spinning around the hook. With this complete, we'll continue to secure the cap tail to the hook shank, at which point we'll snip the excess free and cover up our remaining tag end. Next, we'll grab some chenille, wrap our thread to the back of the fly, stripping off a small section of the chenille, exposing the braided core, and using this to secure it to the back of the fly. Once complete, we'll wrap our thread forward to the head of the fly, and begin wrapping our tan chenille forward in closed touching spirals, continuing to do so until you reach your thread. At which point we'll secure it in place by taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind, and snipping the excess free. Build up a small hot spot at the head of the fly, helping to secure the chenille in place, and whip finish to hold everything in place. Snip your thread free, and add some adhesive. Here I'm using a UV resin, however, head cement will work just as well. And this is the maple syrup. It's a classic main pattern that is incredibly simple, yet highly effective. And if you're new to fly tying, I would highly suggest giving it a try. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This simple midge can help you catch more fish. To tie it, we'll start off with some black thread, secure it to the hook shank, and snap the excess free. Next, we'll grab some red crystal flash, measure it to be about the length of the hook shank, and secure it to the back of our fly. With the tail secured, we'll begin wrapping up towards the bead, snip the excess free, and grab some wire. Here I'm using small in the color rust. Insert the wire into the bead, secure tightly, and wrap towards the back of the fly. Once we reach the tail, we'll reverse directions. Once we reach the tail, we'll reverse directions, wrapping our thread towards the bead. Once complete, grab your wire and begin wrapping it in open spirals towards the head of the fly. Take your time to ensure that each wrap is evenly spaced. Once you reach your bead, secure, taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind the wire, then helicopter the excess free. 
Next, we'll grab some dubbing. This is one of my new favorites. You can find it in the links below. Create a dubbing noodle and wrap it just behind the bead. And brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. And this is an Inferno Midge. It makes for a great attractor pattern. It sinks quickly and can be used year round. If you don't tie and would like to try it, you can pick some up on my website below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. We're gonna be creating one of my favorite variations of one of the world's most popular flies. To start, we'll grab some black thread, secure it to our hook shank, continue wrapping back up towards the bead, inserting some lead-free wire and securing it tightly in place. Helicopter the excess free and continue wrapping backwards until we reach the bend of the hook. At which point we'll grab a black saddle hackle feather, strip free a few fibers and secure them to the back of the fly, measuring them to be roughly the size of our body. At which point we'll continue to secure the fibers to the top of the hook shank until we reach the bead. Snip the excess free and grab some brassy wire. Here I'm using silver. Select a small piece of wire, inserting it into the bead and securing it to your hook shank. Continue wrapping backwards until you reach your tail. At which point we'll reverse our thread's direction once again and create a smooth body until we reach our bead. With this complete, we can grab our wire and begin to wrap it forward in open spirals, taking care to make sure that each wrap is evenly spaced. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and helicoptering the excess free. We'll then grab some straggle string, here I'm using black, securing the strand tightly just behind our bead and then begin to hackle it forward for one to three turns. Secure with your thread, taking care not to trap any fibers. Snip the excess free and whip finish to hold everything together. And this is one of my favorite variations of the zebra midge. The straggle string adds a little bit of a hot spot and gives it an extra buggy look. It's simple to tie, durable, and will definitely catch you some fish. And if you'd like to win this one, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Today, we're gonna to be tying an underutilized fly pattern that deserves a spot in your fly box. To start, grab some small copper wire Secure it to the hook shank, wrapping well into the bend of the hook. At which point, we'll reverse our thread's direction back to the head of the fly. If you have a rotary vise, put in a couple turn whip finish and set your thread to the side. We'll then grab our wire and use your vise's rotary function to wrap it towards the head of the fly. If your vise doesn't have a rotary function, you can simply do this by hand. Today is also the airing of the first ever Mainly Flies podcast. You can find that on my second channel, linked here. The primary focus will be to answer your fly tying questions. So if there's anything you want to know more detail about, be sure to leave it in the comments of the most recent podcast. Once we reach the hook point, we'll grab our thread and secure the wire tightly in place, taking thread wrap both in front as well as behind and helicoptering the excess free. We'll then grab some tinsel, here I'm using a gold hollow tinsel. Secure it to one side of our fly, wrapping back towards the wire. Repeating this process with the other side. Secure tightly and begin to build up a larger head than our body. Fold your tinsel over and secure it to the head of the fly. Take your time to ensure they're oriented how you like. With this complete, snip the excess free and whip finish to hold everything in place and cover your tag ends. Snip your thread free and grab some bone dry UV resin to paint over the body as well as the head. Fix in place with the UV light and add a second drop to the head of the fly. We wanna make this look a little bit larger than the body. Fix with the UV light and this is the brass it's a highly productive fly pattern that often gets overlooked, and they work exceptionally well in the spring and winter months. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This underrated pattern is a trout magnet. To tie it, we'll start off with some red vivas thread, secure it to our hook shank, and snip the excess free. Next, we'll grab some brassy wire. Here I'm using silver. Insert the wire into the bead and secure tightly using your thread. 
continue wrapping and securing your wire well into the bend of the hook. At which point, we'll reverse directions and begin wrapping towards the head of the fly. Repeating this process, stopping just short of your starting point will create a smooth transition, stopping once your thread reaches the bead. Once you're happy with your transition, grab your brassy wire and begin wrapping it forward in open spirals until we reach our thread. At which point, we'll secure, taking wraps both in front as well as behind the wire and helicoptering the excess free. Next, we'll grab some small beads, here I'm using a pearl, thread it through a floral leader, here I'm using 6x, and secure it to the top of the fly, just behind the bead. Use your thread to fix the fluorocarbon leader in place, taking wraps both in front, as well as behind, and helping to prop the bead up by taking wraps around the fluorocarbon between the bead and your hook. Secure in place, and snip the excess floral free. If you'd like to try this fly, but don't tie, you can pick up this fly, as well as all my other favorite variations in my website listed below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This is a midge that I love to use for wintertime trout, particularly in this color variation. To tie it, we'll start off with some black wire. Along with some small wire, here I'm using the color rust. We'll grab two strands of our wire, secure it to the hook shank, and wrap well into the bend of the hook. And if you'd like to pick a few up, you can find them listed on my website. With our wires secured tightly in place, we'll reverse our thread's direction back up towards the bead. This time, taking our time to build up a nice smooth transition towards our bead. Doing so by wrapping up almost till we reach our bead, leaving a bit of room at the head of the fly reversing your thread's direction and doubling back up to our starting point. You can do this as many or as few times as you like to build the profile you're looking for. Once complete, we'll grab our wire and begin to wrap it forward in closed touching spirals. Using one wire that's slightly larger than the other will help add some texture and continue to wrap your wire forward until you reach your thread. Once complete, we'll secure it tightly in place, taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind our wire, and helicoptering the excess free. We'll then grab some dubbing. Here I'm using an ice dubbing of black that's blended with red. Create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping a small amount up towards the head of our fly. Pull everything backwards, taking a single wrap in front and brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. Grab some UV resin, paint it over your thread before whip finishing to hold it all together. We'll snip our thread free, secure it in place with a UV light, and this is a simple wire image that is surprisingly successful on the water. This is one of my favorite color variations, representing red that you often see in midges. However, it works quite well in many different colors. Thank you all so much for watching. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This highly successful fly pattern might trigger some fly fishers. To tie it, we'll start off with this Vivis body quill, secure that to the hook shank, and snip the excess furry. Wrap back up towards the hook eye, and grab some vinyl ribbing. Here we're using a nymph size in red. Secure a small section to the hook shank, ensuring that it's resting on top of the hook. Continue to secure tightly, just on top of our thread wraps. Once complete, grab your whip finisher and secure everything in place. Snip the excess free and grab some UV resin to paint over the body section. This will increase the durability and give the pattern a little bit of shine. Once happy, secure in place with a UV light and pinch the vinyl ribbing together to give it some character. And this is a pattern I like to use to imitate small freshwater worms, as well as little red midges. And the great thing about it is it can be trimmed the length on the water. This is a simple guide pattern that is likely to offend some, but works surprisingly well out on the water. You can find it on my website listed below. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one.